Trans youth charity mermaids are being investigated by the Charity Commission for unethical practices. An article in The Telegraph revealed red flags in its dealings with children. The charity are accused of sending controversial breast-binding devices to children as young as 13 without their parents' knowledge. A statement from the Charity Commission read, Concerns have been raised with us about Mermaid's approach to safeguarding young people. We have opened a regulatory compliance case and have written to the trustees. We now await their reply. I'm joined now by the author and director of advocacy for campaign group Sex Matters, Helen Joyce. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, Helen. Um, a lot of people watching might not know what mermaids are or what they do, so perhaps you can help fill us in on that. So they started out as a pa pa parents' self-help group. They were a really small little charity, and I think they did good work. Mm. You know, parents whose children are gender dysphoric or who say that they're trans, that was a tiny number of kids 15, 20 years ago, but a very difficult situation to be in. And then they kind of, you know, grew like Topsy and turned into something completely different, which is an ideological group that's pushing gender identity as the explanation for everything. You know, they lobbied quite hard for a very different and very aggressive approach to medical treatment for trans kids. Uh, you know, they, they um, produce uh, materials for schools. They go in, they train teachers. They tell teachers to tell kids that what makes you a boy or a girl is how you perform gender stereotypes and so on. And most recently, they've taken a legal case against the Charity Commission for accepting the registration of the LGB Alliance, which is a charity that represents anyone who's same-sex attracted or bisexual, but not the whole gender identity stuff. So there's a lot to think about within yeah. that. I mean, you mentioned the, the idea of um, how their mermaid's view of gender is based on gender stereotypes. In your excellent book, Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality, you, um, you actually cite a, a leaked training session where they scale gender according to, from one end is Barbie and the other end is G.I. Joe. That's right. They tell, par uh, they tell teachers that they should explain to children that, you know, not everybody is a boy or a girl, that some people are in between, that they should think about the stereotypes that make people boys and girls and they should place themselves on what they called a gender scale. And it literally was a picture of Barbie at one end and G.I. Joe at the other end and sort of morphing jelly babies in between. You know, around the middle, it's got a sort of a si sideways hat that looks like a pan. And at <laughs> one end, there's little pigtails and the other end's really beefy, you know. And so you're meant to look at this. And if you're a kid who, you know, a girl who likes climbing and hates frills or you're a boy who likes ballet and hates football or something, you must look at this and think, oh, goodness, maybe I'm not... I mean... I'm not actually at one end or the other. But that question maybe is that they don't really seem to entertain that because they, they push the idea of gender affirmation. So, so a child comes along and says, I think I'm this. Their policy is, well, we must affirm that not talk about it or explore it or anything like that? Well, that's right, because they believe that everybody is born with a gender identity. There's the central contradiction in all of this, that they say everyone's born with a gender identity, but that gender identity reveals itself through gender stereotypes. Right. So when you call them out and you say, look, you're just peddling gender stereotypes, they say, no, 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 there's a gender identity, it's different, it's innate. And you say, but how would you know what a child's gender identity is? Ooh, they'll reveal it through stereotypes. Now, you mentioned that they had, Mermaids had called for LGB Alliance to be stripped of its charity status. That has resulted in a court case, which has been much publicised. And Mermaids, a uh, representative from Mermaids appeared at that court hearing and said that they don't offer medical advice. Well, it looks like maybe they do. Well, they send out breast binders. I mean, I know parents whose children have received them, so I'm sure that's correct. You know, I, I too am a journalist. I too hear from parents directly. Um, but the other thing that they did was they were very aggressively pushing gender affirmation inside the Tavistock Clinic. Yes. Which was the, you know, very controversial and soon to be closed NHS clinic. Yes. Uh, so that was, by international standards, that was quite a conservative clinic, like quite slow to medicalise children until about 2014. But Mermaid's parents were pushing and pushing and pushing and saying we bring our kids abroad for puberty blockers we bring our kids abroad for cross-sex hormones before you let us uh, have them and they changed the practice inside the nhs so not to give medical advice no i mean if they're actually having that kind of influence yeah, then that's it absolutely that's, and and you know studies are coming out that are suggesting there are all sorts of dangers with chest binders with even with the puberty drugs you, you really you shouldn't need to ask should you it's like if you're going to go squashing down a body part day in day out and constrict your breathing mm. of course it's going to cause problems the met police say that children from um, uh, from from parts of africa where they do what's called breast ironing which is like really flattling down a child's breasts as they grow a girl's breasts as they grow that's child abuse yes. and the parents usually think they're doing a good thing but it's still child abuse. Well, breast binders are that. And, and, and the Telegraph is saying that on, this, on these forums, they were encouraging young people, people without parents' knowledge, yep. to undertake that kind of practice. Yes, and I suspect that it was only occasionally that, but if you are going to have forums for 
young people, mm. you have to have the most meticulous child safeguarding. You know, yes. Absolutely everything has to be double and triple checked. You have to be overseeing and overseeing. You do not direct people to go and have conversations off your chat. Yes. And they do seem to have done that. So that's the sort of thing that the Charity Commission is going to look at. And they do seem to have an incredible degree of clout. I mean, they've been funded by Starbucks, for instance, did a big campaign to raise money for mermaids. Is it just the case that people have just decided that their approach is right without really looking into it? I think so. And I also think from mermaids' point of view, it must seem very strange that they're the ones who are being picked on because there are literally hundreds of groups of various sizes that are pushing this stuff. Yes. And in particular, some other big ones like gendered intelligence, which also write similar sorts of teaching materials that also train teachers. Uh, you know, the sorts of materials that your kids are learning in RSE or PSHE lessons, you really, really need to go and look at them. You need to demand yes. to see them and check what they're being told because a lot of them are influenced by this entire sort of arena of lobby groups. And Mermaids is not the only one. Is it the case, though, that they're, the case that they brought against LGB Alliance, that that's the reason they're being scrutinised so much in particular? I'm not sure. I mean, it can't have helped because it's certainly an extraordinary case that they brought. It's not mm. usual for one charity to try and get another charity delisted on ideological grounds. Yes. In fact, I don't know that it's ever happened before. But I think people have been pushing for years. I know that people have sent things to the Charity Commission before and the Charity Commission has brushed them off. I think they've thought that it's, you know, the Green Ink Brigade. But then... A sort of a, you know a weight of evidence has come out in the press, and now they really have to look. Yes, but I mean the very fact that they did that suggests that they are sincere in their views that they believe LGB Alliance or people who are advocating for same-sex attracted people or people who are flagging up the potential risks of affirming a child's gender identity without any explorative therapeutic uh, procedure that those people are in fact hateful and transphobic. I think they probably genuinely believe that, don't they? I, I, but I think you have to look at who's running mermaids. So the people at the top of mermaids are all people who have transitioned their own children. And oh. so they're people who have their own ideological stance on this. They've done something with their own children that they now require the rest of us to play along with. So if you have a son and you've transitioned that son and you say that your son is now your daughter, she, her, girl's name, girl's clothes, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, you are making an implicit promise to that child that everyone else will play along. Yes. And now other people are saying, do you know what? No, you can't be in girls' sports. You can't be in girls' changing rooms. If you go to prison, you won't go to a, a women's prison. You're making a liar out of that parent. So there's a personal stake There's here. a very big personal stake. And the LGB Alliance in particular is saying that sexual orientation is based on your sex, yes. not your gender identity. So again, it's saying the things that the people involved in mermaids are saying to their own children, those things aren't going to be societally accepted by everybody. And that's really difficult. So I, I think that's why. I think it's very personal. And for a long time, people weren't able to have these conversations. And, I mean, you argue in your book that I think one of the reasons you say why this went so far and why we ended up with men identifying as women, even if they had a history of sexual assault and going to a female prison, is because people just wouldn't believe that that could be happening. Exactly. It just seems extraordinary, doesn't it? I mean, people just think, oh, tinfoil hat brigade yeah. when they hear these things. And then suddenly it comes to their own classroom, their own child's classroom, you know, to, you know, to the office near them. They're told that suddenly, you know, the toilets are going gender neutral or something like that and they're not allowed to say anything because it's bigotry. And then they belatedly realise that, you know, Cassandra has been shouting for years but yes. they were saying, oh, no, that's nonsense. But there's all sorts of problems with, with, uh, with misrepresentation of the law, misrepresentation of the Equalities Act. I mean, last week I was talking to Caroline Fisk about uh, the Royal Borough of Greenwich, which has actually been sending out uh, details on, on uh, inclusive language uh, to parents and to teachers. And in that document, it says the Equality Act refers to this as sex, but what they really mean is gender identity. But that's not what they really mean. No, no, no. I mean, sex, male and female are words that have strict legal meanings that are established in British law. And they're the thing that you were conceived, the thing that a doctor noticed, perhaps, at this 13-week scan. Yes. And definitely noticed when you were born and put on the birth certificate. That's your sex. And that's the thing that's in the Equality Act. But, but activists would say sex is merely assigned. Listen, don't make me swear on air. <laughs> <laughs> but they would say that, wouldn't they? They would say it's almost yes, like I know, guesswork. But there are flat earth believers. There are people <laughs> who think the earth is 3,000 years old. I can't believe that we have to engage with this level of nonsense. But we, we sort of do, don't we? I, mean, I wrote an entire book about it. You did, it, yes. you did. So that's, <laughs> that's true. And when it comes to the CAS report, I want to ask you about this because the CAS report did ultimately result, result in the finding that the Tavistock Clinic wasn't safe. Yes. for young people. Can you talk to us a bit about that? So Hilary Cass is a very eminent paediatrician and the government asked her to look right across uh, gender services for um, youth in, in the NHS. And they are mostly 
provided just at this one clinic in London, the Tavistock Clinic, and long waiting lists, very ideological, very patchy approach, very much captured by the lobby, mm. mermaids, gendered intelligence, and a lot of them. Um, you know, doesn't do good research, doesn't do good follow-up, isn't able to tell people really what puberty blockers do do to you, whatever. And so she wrote this interim report. Her final report is due out next year, and in it she really wrote some very sensible things about how we don't have the research base we need, um, that if a child says gender, then everything else that's happening with that child gets sidelined. So the kids who are seen at the Tavistock very often are autistic spectrum, they're anxious, they're depressed, they're self-harming, they've got eating disorders, like there's all these comorbidities, but as soon as you say gender, it's just gender. Right. And so what Hilary Cass said is that that separation of gender issues from everything else was not treating uh, gender distressed children well, and that those services needed to go back into mainstream mental health services for children right. around the country and be dealt with alongside other things, the way that you would think that they should be. And by doing that, I mean, a lot of activists have pointed out there are these, these other clinics opening up, but they'll face more scrutiny, won't they, than Tavistock? Yes, is. but also they're meant to be integrated <laughs> clinics. So a child comes along and says, you know, scars all over their arms, I think I'm a boy, and they say, let's talk about the scars on your arms first. Yes. Like, that's the right that, way to yes, go, isn't absolutely. it? absolutely. Um, just quickly before we finish, do you, are you confident that with things such as the CAS report, the closure of the Tavistock, uh, this potential investigation into mermaids, that we're moving in the right direction and actually we can get back to a situation where people recognise the importance of biological sex in, in social situations? I know we're moving in the right direction, but we have an awfully long way to go. 20 years of this sort of stuff has just, you know, we've sent its tendrils out into every part of our society and schools are teaching nonsense, all of them constantly, and then they tell parents they're bigots if they complain about it. That's the thing that worries me most, what's happening in schools. That's where we have to sort this out. Helen Joyce, thanks very much. Thank you for having me on. Now, we were hoping to interview a guest from Mermaids on the show, but they declined our invitation. Uh, but they did send a statement. They say, we're in the midst of a targeted, cynical attack on mermaids and the services we provide. We believe this to be an attack on the trans community as a whole and an attempt to undermine the rights we have fought and will continue to fight so hard for. We felt it important to reassure the families and young people that need us and the wider community that we will not be bullied or intimidated by those with an anti-trans agenda. Helen, do you have an anti-trans agenda? I don't want trans children treated worse than all other children, and that's what's happening now. They're not getting the health care they need because they're being dealt with in an ideological way. I want them to get the same standard of evidence and care and thought and support and safeguarding as all other children. Yes. Well said. Now, yes. I think that deserves a round of